Visual effects are the cherry on top of any great looking game, and they're vital to the gamer's experience as they play. VFX communicate game events such as environmental hazards and healing zones, and they visually reward the player for well-executed actions, like an action scene culminating in a big fire explosion. Unity provides lots of options to add VFX to your game. You can add frame-by-frame -frame animations made in other software, animate particles, or add animated shaders. Frame-by-frame -frame animation can be used in particle systems, where it is referred to as texture sheet animation. Flipbook animations can be used in the shader graph by animating the UV position over time, which creates the illusion of moving frames. The particle system allows you to display and animate many smaller images or meshes in order to achieve a single visual effect. Particle properties like size, velocity, color, and rotation can be animated over time using certain predefined rules and randomization. This allows you to create dynamic effects like fire, explosion, smoke, and magic spells. You create a new particle system by selecting the menu option Game Object, Effects, Particle System. The renderer module allows you to change how particles will look. There are many settings, but the most important to change is the material setting, where you can add a new material with a texture. Most of the particle properties can be randomized to achieve an unpredictable and natural look. To speed up your game creation process significantly, check out the Asset Store for pre-made particle VFX, linked in the description. Another way to make VFX is using shaders. Shaders are a set of instructions for the graphics processor, and they can, for example, calculate pixel colors or vertex positions. Shader Graph enables you to build shaders visually instead of writing code. You can create and connect nodes in a graph framework. Shader Graph gives instant feedback that reflects your changes, and it's simple enough for users who are new to shader creation. The vertex displacement shader affects the positions of the vertices in a geometry of the mesh. To achieve the wave animation, gradient noise is used as a wave mask. The sprite that will be animated by the waving shader needs to have a sufficient vertex count, otherwise the animation will look rough. Flow maps are textures that store directional information. The shader uses the flow map texture to control the direction of the main texture's UV coordinates. The colors red and green are used to indicate the XY direction that pixels flow in every frame, making the pixels of the main texture flow. Another shader animation technique you can try is called animated alpha clipping, which creates smooth animation from a single texture. This occurs by showing a specific range of pixels in each frame based on their alpha values. The texture is single channel, so the effect is simple to achieve. One of the most common 2D techniques deals with reflections and refractions, like those you see on water, ice, glass, or in hot air. To achieve this effect, another camera outputs the parts that will be reflected or refracted into a rendered texture. This texture is then used in a shader, distorted and adjusted as needed, and finally outputted onto the screen. To make sprites glow with blinding light, combine the HDR enhanced sprite shader with the Bloom post-processing effect. Sprite masks are used to either hide or reveal parts of a sprite or group of sprites. For example, you could hide part of an image to produce a portal effect or make a collectible card with a 3D effect. That wraps it up for part 3, so thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. I look forward to putting out part 4 and I'll see you in the next one.